Hi YouTube, this is JJ714 and I'm coming at you, um, I know you're saying why does she have shades on, but I'm going to start a series of just conversations. Um, so this particular topic I'm going to talk about really touched my heart. So um, I'm going to begin, I have shades on because a lot of us tend to walk around covered up so that no one can see the real us. And sometimes we have to take the blinders off first and begin to see our own self so that other people can really see who we are. Um, the name of this topic today is, do you consider yourself a selfish person? And the reason I bring this up, um, I'm not going to get into any particulars. Um, like I said, I just want to start talking about just some day-to-day -day issues, things that we experience in and out. But um, this one just sort of touched my heart because I found myself, um, and I always consider myself a giving person. When I say give, I'm the type of person that um, if I feel like someone really, really uh, is really in need, I will give my very last um, you know, whether it's $5, $10, it could be $20 or even $200 or even $1,000. And I'm not talking about something that I'm just estimating. I'm talking about things that I have done in my life. And um, I'm not saying this or, you know, trying to make myself look like I'm such a great person because I know just like everybody else, I have my shortcomings as well. But overall, I do try to do my best to not only live a, a godly or Christian life, but I do try to do what the golden rule says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. However, I also look at that, well, if I was really take that literally, then I could actually turn into some of the people that I have, you know, run into, whether it be family members, um, former friends, or people that I just meet from day to day, um, I could become like that myself, and I'm finding, especially with the economy the way it is, and there are so many people hurting in the world, that it's like, um, in my mind's eye, why is it that the people who have the abilities to do more, sometimes it's not that, you know, the Word of God says that we should not let, you know, if you're somebody that gives, then you shouldn't be running around telling what you do. But at the same token, it always seems that the people that give the most are the ones who have the least. And, um, you know, the topic I was talking to someone, we were just, uh, I think I had gone to the um, cleaners to pick up some clothes last Friday, and I was talking to um, the owner, and she was just saying how selfish you know, some people are and how people, you know, they want to know you, they want to get to know your business or it's all about materialistic things. And she was a, um, a lady, she was more mature than I was, very, very sweet person. I've been knowing her for a few years because I take my clothes or take my husband's clothes to that cleaners. But she was just saying how people are so materialistic these days. It's like, it's all about what kind of house they live in, what kind of car they drive, and, you know, what they wear and everything. And it's just materialistic to the point where she does not want to really meet people because she don't know if they want to know her for who she is or for what she has. And I understand what she's saying there. But I had an incident that occurred yesterday, and it really, really sort of got to me because... It's someone that's near and dear to my heart that I love so very much, and there's nothing that I would never not do for this person, even when the person, you know, have not shown the same forth of, um, you know, gratitude, kindness, or anything toward me. I try to not always remember that maybe they feel like they don't have, but I look at the point, I've been unemployed for two and a half years, I have a 10-year-old daughter, my husband works, we, you know, we're paying the bills and things like that. But there's always things that, you know, a person could use or need. But this particular person has come to me for 
you know, help and so forth, and they have a job. But not only that, whenever they're in position that perhaps, you know, every now and then call and say, hey, you know, I was just calling to see, you know, do you need anything? That's all I'm saying, but they never do. And when we're in conversation from time to time, they will say, oh, well, if I were to come into, you know, like winning the lottery or something, I would do this for you. I would take care of people. Blah, blah, blah. And it's sort of like gets me because I'm like, okay, if I'm not willing to help a person in a situation where I am right now, then what makes me think if God or circumstances were to make it where I'm in a better position that I would do any more than where I am now? And so it's really starting to make me take a look at the people who I value, who I consider friends, um, and even, you know, close family members, because it's like you don't want to feel, or at least with myself, and I'm sure a lot of people are in the same category, you don't want to feel like the only time that you hear from certain people is when they need something or when they're going through something. But it's never where they check on you or call a check on you to say, hey, I just called a check on you, see how you were doing, do you need anything, whatever. And it's um, it's been a real, real eye opener for me. I guess when I was working, and you know, in school, I was just so busy with everything, and then you know, trying to take care of my family when I was home and so forth, that I never looked at things the way that I do now. But I was just saying to my husband today because even during the service, the pastor had mentioned about how there are some very, very selfish people in the world. And, you know, when he said that, it just brought me back <laughs> to my conversation that I had with my husband last night concerning this person because I was like, I'm beginning to feel like when I went back and started evaluating um, the situation, I mean, this particular person, they are, they, it's a family member. So I've had a, a ton of experiences. So that's why... I'm not just talking from off the top of my head. I'm talking from experience. But overall, it's always been me being the person that's been there for them. And even when I have been in, say, my greatest need, that person was not there for me. And so um, I'm sort of like my grandmother was. Uh, she's gone to be with the Lord. She's been gone for a lot of years. But... My grandmother was very, very quiet, but if somebody that she didn't like, I mean, she wouldn't go out of her way to do anything, but if it was like they had a death in the family or something happened, she would be one of the first people that would make herself available to be there to help, whether it was to do, you know, make food, you know, go sit with the person or whatever if they were sick. But nowadays, it's like, People are only interested in me, me, myself, and I. And um, it's just really, really um, challenging. But I said to my husband tonight, I said, you know, I said I'm really having to decide whether I'm going to put this person on a list of people that, you know, I'll pray for them. And, you know, whenever God would have me to do something, I would do it. But I'm just not going to go out of my way like I used to because it just feels like I feel like I'm taken for granted. I mean, it's to the point, for instance, normally my phone is just blown up by this person. And when the situation occurred, instead of them just picking up the phone, calling, which they had, they were able to, they decided to text me. And to me, whenever a person texts, it's just like a person being on a computer. They really don't want to communicate with you, but they want to tell you what they want you to know without you being able to respond to them. And it really, really hurt because I'm like, okay, I thought we were adults, we're Christians. What's the deal here? So I immediately picked up the phone and I called this person. 
course, they did not pick up the phone. So I left a message, and I was. I was a little upset because I felt like, okay, if you could spend the, if speed the time to text me, you could just pick up the phone and call. But then I left them, uh, you know, it was what was on my mind. But then I had to think about it because the Word of God tells me that I'm not to go to bed angry. And so I had to pray and ask God to forgive me to make sure that I had the proper attitude. But also to the point that knowing that this person does not control my life. And it's to a point that I'm going to, like I said, put them in a point where, yes, every person's life is important or it should be. But I'm just going to make sure that it's not that important to me anymore. In the point of my priorities are my relationship with God first, my relationship with my husband and daughter, and then everything else, excuse me, everything else falls into place after that. Now, I'm a person, I believe in family. I love my family. But I'm also to a point that I don't like a lot of drama in my life. And it's amazing because I just watched this program called You Cut Off. I guess it was about these female that females that are privileged females, but they only were given allowed to take so much to a house, and it's like about six of them, and it's it's just too much drama. But one of the pro, pro, things that they were doing, they were building a helping this person build a habitat for humanity house. My husband works for Habitat. And um, then also they were going to um, sell some of their own personal items and take it to like a pawn shop to get like $1,500 so that they could um, use it to buy a laptop for the lady's daughter in a, a playhouse for her little son. Well, the lady that was put in charge of the task she really did have the right idea, but a lot of people, of course, when they're dealing with women, there's a lot of jealousy and everything, and of course, they didn't want to listen to her. So when they ended up getting to the place, all a lot of the stuff that they put in, it was junk. The people just would not even take it. But then afterwards, they met, and the lady told who was over the host told who passed and who fell. And so then even after they found out they failed, they still had bad attitudes because they really didn't get it. But I guess I say that to say it and all is that I try to um, think of, you know, what if, you know, I, God forbid that I would find myself, you know, on the streets without a roof over their head, you know, my family, I, is there anybody that would, help us because, you know, we may have just fallen on hard times. And, you know, I've come to the conclusion that I would pray that I would never find myself in that situation because there are so many people that are in that situation. Um, and I truly do believe, and even just with what my husband and I have experienced in the last almost three years without me being employed a little over two and a half years, that it has been because of my giving, you know, before I met my husband, we've been married now, it'll be 14 years in August. And then since we've been married, I try to always make sure that we give, you know, even at times when, you know, things may be tight or whatever, you can always find something to give. And a lot of times people will say, oh, well, I'll give my time. Well, okay, if that's all you give us your time, then guess what? Somebody may pay for a trip or for you to have vacation or you get some time off. But, you know, a lot of times what people need is money, they need food, they need clothes. You know, sometimes they may even need shelter. But the thing is, if you're not willing, and I mean, I've had things that, that have very sentimental value to me. But the key is, okay, it's the sentimental value more important than it is the particular need. And I guess that's where it has to, the, the bottom hit the road, so to speak, is because a lot of times we are so materialistic 
that, you know, we come up with the excuses, oh, well, you know, my grandmother gave me this or whatever. And please don't get me wrong. I do know because my my grandmother is gone. And trust me, if I had something that my grandmother had given me and she's not with me now, it would be very, very difficult for me to part with that. But if it's something that I have that I purchased and maybe I've, I've got a, you know, real cling to it. And I mean, God has tested me like this before. I never forget, I was in the Air Force, and when I was in the Air Force, because I wore my uniform a lot, I sort of took after my mom. I wasn't so much into the amount of clothes or, or the quantity of clothes that I would have, but I always went for quality. In other words, I didn't always um, buy a lot of clothes, but when I did buy my clothes, I tried to make sure that they were well-made um, clothes or well put together. And so what I would do is I may see an item and it may cost a lot of money. Either if I could put it where I could get it, um, put it on sale. You know, I, I did work some retail jobs before and I would, you know, being that I was in retail, I could get discounts or so forth. So I would see if I could, you know, hold that item or whatever and pay it, you know, or save money and save in installments. But I would eventually get it. Well, one of my friends, um, I knew the husband and wife and they had children. She had just had her third baby. She had her only daughter. And we were about the same size and it boiled down to, you know, with having children at the time, I was single, so, but I knew having children and her her husband, she worked, but then for some time she didn't work. And then it was hard because they were still a young couple as well and they had three children. And so I had bought this dress. It was a beautiful dress. And I mean, this dress cost a lot of money because <laughs> it took me a while to pay for it. And then I had started losing weight. So I had gotten a little bit smaller than where, where I was at the time when I purchased it. And I actually tried the dress on and it fit me like a glove. Well, I was giving away her some of my clothes. The Lord had said, well, why don't you give her some of your clothes and when i give things away trust me i don't give away junk i would never give something to somebody that i would not want to wear so i went through and i was um getting clothes out and like i said i was in the military so i didn't have to wear i had a uniform that i wore monday through friday and i mostly bought my clothes for church or when i went out you know somewhere nice and then i passed the dress <laughs> And it was like the Holy Spirit just arrested me because it was like the Lord said, what are you doing? And I'm like, what are you talking about, Lord? And he said, well, what about that dress? And first I was like, no, Lord, I can't give her my dress. I'm, You know, I paid a lot of money for this dress. I've just been able to get in the dress. And the Lord was like, really? And it was to a point that I knew in my heart and in you, those of you who really are Christian know how God deals with you. You know, when he tells you to do something, you're not going to rest until you do it. So before I could get the other clothes together, I just had to pull the dress out and put it in. I put it in between the other clothes and I got ready and I took some, took them over to her house, you know, like a few days later. And lo and behold, she just went through the dresses, I made sure I took the tags off so she didn't know it was brand new. And she was so, just so happy and ecstatic. And she pulled the dress out of all the dresses. She was just like, oh my God, because her husband also, he was in the military, but he was also a minister too. And so being that she was a minister's wife, she had to look nice too. And she looked at the dress and she said, oh, Jan, she said, I love this dress. She said, you just don't know, I've been wanting a nice black dress um, for a long time. And she said, this dress looks like it's brand new. And I just had to just say, oh, Brenda, you know, just, you know, count it all joy. God is good or something like that. But I almost cried because I really wanted to snatch the dress back. <laughs> but I didn't. And not only that, because I did that, it, my birthday was, I think it was like about five months after that happened. No, this was like in March or May. My birthday is in July. 
And I had some clothes that I had put, because at that time I used to love J.C. Penney's. And then there was this other store, I can't remember, to come to me in a little bit, that I loved their clothes. So I would always go and I would um, um, buy clothes or... You know, the lady, she knew me so well at J.C. Penney's. It was like if it's certain things that she knew was my style, she would set aside and call me and let me know. Well, just so happened this particular time, I had like three or four outfits, and I only had enough money for three of the outfits. But the one that I really wanted, I could not afford it. So I was going to, I had just told her, I said, I'm going to take these three and I put this back and she said, no, she said, this right here, she said, this outfit goes, is really for you. And I told her, I said, but I really can't afford it right now at this point. And she told me, she said, wait, she said, we're going to work this out. This lady gave me her store discounts and everything. She blessed me so that not only was I able to afford that outfit, I was able to afford another one. So I just say that and, you know, we have got to be more people where we keep our hands open because when you keep them closed like this, nothing can come in. Nothing goes out, but definitely nothing can come in. So I just say that to just, you know, this is my little, you know, swap today, but just want to feel, see what your thoughts are on it. So with that, I'm going to say Talk to you later. I do feel better now that I got it all out. <laughs> but really, I just really enjoy helping people and I love people in general and I care about people. But sometimes it just seems like there are just some people that are bad seeds. And when you're around those kinds of, you know, attitudes and spirits, it can just totally be a big turnoff. And I'm going to be honest, at my point in life, I just want to enjoy life, to enjoy my family, to continue to be blessed, not to let my flow be cut off. So I just choose this day. As Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Will it be God or man? And I'm telling you, I'm serving God because you can never lose with him. And even when we mess up from time to time, all we have to do is go back Ask the Father to repent. That means to turn around. Ask the Father to forgive us. And guess what? He will. So with that, be blessed and talk to you later. Bye-bye.